foreigner, alien, immigrant, refugee, those people. These provocative words can make us anxious, and maybe that's why we've heard them headlined in the news or trotted out in most any political speech these days. If they grabbed your attention, you now have a sense of what those hearing today's readings probably felt as well. For inclusion and exclusion, sadly, are not modern phenomena. Who's in and who's out have been around probably since the world population increased from two to three. Not only were the Israelites mentioned in the reading from Jeremiah all refugees, told to settle in for the long haul, which, by the way, almost got poor Jeremiah killed, Foreigner is the word used by Jesus himself in today's gospel to describe the man grateful beyond measure for being healed. And when we read how Jesus responds to this man who, indebted and overjoyed, falls down in front of him, in a way the remarks almost seem rude. He doesn't even address him personally at first, but he sort of talks over him, right? saying something like, hey, didn't I just heal ten lepers? Where are the other nine? Why is this foreigner the only one who bothered to come back and show a little gratitude? The truth is, the other nine were doing exactly what Jesus told them to do. Maybe they thought if they didn't, their healing would somehow be reversed. Because you know what? When you are an outsider, when you are the one who is different, you learn fairly quickly that fear is a constant, silent companion and that trust can be in short supply. That tenth guy, the double outsider, a Samaritan with leprosy, showed real courage in daring to break from the others and return. It's ironic to think that this same person who had been hanging out with the other nine when they were all outsiders together wouldn't be given the time of day by them once they had all been healed. Deciding who's included and excluded, who's in and who's out, is like that. It is human nature to fear those who are not like us, who don't look like us or think the way we do, who don't share our beliefs or values, whose cultures and customs we find odd. We know that even babies show a preference for familiar faces and fear faces of those who appear different. And fear, fear compels us to do some really odd things. We build walls and we put up fences to keep outsiders from intruding and make us feel safe. Laws and social norms are designed to protect us and allow us to live unencumbered of the fear and discomfort of having to figure out how to deal with the unfamiliar. That was true in Jesus' day, and it's true in our day. But of course, there is a wrinkle in living this way, and it's this. Those walls and fences and laws and norms work well until they don't. Sometimes what we design to protect us, you see, can ultimately enslave us. I think that's what might have happened to those nine obedient lepers. There's no doubt that they had great faith. They believed Jesus was able to heal them, because if they didn't, they would not have cried out for his mercy. From an acceptably safe distance, they begged, Jesus proclaimed, and they were quick to follow the letter of the law and get the certificate that would allow them to once again be accepted back into society and back to their families. Theirs was a transactional faith. But the faith of that tenth leper 
That was transformative. He never says, and we are not told what prompted him, to disregard doing the right thing and risk doing the holy thing. But I suspect it went even beyond gratitude for being healed. Maybe it had something to do with the fact that unlike the others, he had always been an outsider, and when Jesus included him in the miracle, he recognized something that most insiders take for granted. That in one way or another, all of us, all of us have felt the sting of being marginalized. For some of us, it comes from the color of our skin. For some, gender or sexual preference. We experience it when we are labeled, labeled too young or too old, too fat, too thin, differently abled, or because of where we were born, whether that is Syria or the wrong side of the tracks. Sometimes we spend so much time and energy trying to do the stuff we think will make us an insider that we end up erecting a wall around our souls and we lose sight of our primal identity, that we are beloved children of God, valued beyond all measure. In just a few minutes from now, we will join each other in prayer around this altar and we will pray these words. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. Do we think about what that means when we pray it? It means that in this world and for our life, we are all living in exile. None of us is going to make it out of this world alive. Not one. And I think what the 10th leper realized, what moved him to such gratitude, that is, in a world where he never felt like he truly belonged, he discovered the place where he did, laying down in awe and reverence at the feet of Jesus the Christ. Far more than simple inclusion, where no matter what he did, um, he would always be an outsider, he had arrived at the place where he would always be an insider because he was loved. The depth of his healing went far beneath the surface of his skin. It went to the very center of his being. And so the good news for us today is this. Just as the consummate outsider found a home in the love that is Jesus, in this world where we really all are foreigners, so can we. Amen.